Georgette from Quilter's Niche has given me permission to use her uh, placemat designs to illustrate how easy it is to combine designs into one large uh, quilting pattern for the Quilt Motion Quilt CAD software. This is her hot dogs uh, and soda pop placemat, which is comprised of three separate elements the center platter of the hot dogs, the bottom row of the cups, and then the top row of the cups. So using QuiltCAD software, I'll illustrate how that's done. I've set up just a basic quilt layout using blocks that are 6 inches by 6 inches because most placemats usually are about 13 inches high and 18 inches wide. 6 by 6 blocks would accommodate that layout. The first thing we'll need to do is to merge six blocks for our entire placemat. So we will select the six blocks here. They would be then 12 inches by 18 inches. So that would be where our placemat will be. We'll merge these blocks and then navigate to where we've got the uh, designs that we'll use. Uh, I'll be selecting the hot dogs on the plate .gpf. They've already been converted to the QuiltCAD format. Uh, I got them from Georgette in the QLI format. So I'll select hot dogs on the plate, click open, make sure I have the, the merged blocks selected and place the hot dogs there. I'm going to click the export option here in the lower right hand to check the size of it. It says that the hot dogs are 2.182 inches by 11.19 inches. If we look back at Georgette's printout, she says that the center should be about 2.2 by 11.4. So we're in range. That's a good layout for our hot dogs. We'll click exit of the export option. And now we need to bring in the bottom row of cups. So we'll deselect our center section, select three more blocks along the bottom of our placemat, merge these blocks, read, and select hot dogs bottom, open, select our merge blocks and place. We've got them there, and we know that they're not going to be the right size. It looks like they're about 1 by 5, and we're going to want them to be, looking back at Georgette's design, about 5 by 17. So let's go back, exit the export, and so that we have the bottom row of cups and the top row of cups that we'll place here the same size, let's import or read the top row. Whoop. We need to merge those blocks, merge, and then read hot dogs top, place them. Now we've got those are selected. We'll select the bottom cups and we're going to resize both the bottom row of cups and the top row of cups at the same time so that we can get it done at one time and they'll both be the same. So we've got them both selected. We're going to change our step size to increments of five and we're going to do, let's start with one, two, three, four clicks and check our size. Export. Now we know the height we're not concerned about because that's encompassing the area between the top row and the bottom row. We're concerned right now with the width, which is 6.40. And we want it to be about 17 inches, so we've got to go up a little more. If we go up at the increment a step size of 5, it's going to be too big. So let's put it down to step 2. And... Do about three more clicks. These are smaller increments of change. Two, three, and check the size again. The size now is 17.228. Exit. Let's put it down on step size one and go down one click. And check the size again. 
and it's 17.09. I think that's real close to 17 inches, so we're going to keep it at that. Now we need to check the height, so let's deselect the top ones, showing only the bottom cups are selected. Click the export, and it says it's 5.022. Georgette suggested that it be about 5 inches, so I'm going to leave it at that. I think 5.022 is close enough. Exit. Check the top one just to be safe, just to be sure. Export. 5.02. Very good. Okay. Now, if we select all of these at one time and export, we can see that we've got a huge placemat. It's the right width, 17.09, but it's 23 inches tall. So we need to move the top row and the bottom rows down. So let's select nothing but the bottom row. And let's move that up. Let's set the step increments to 3. And let's scoot it up about 7 clicks. 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six, seven. Make sure that it's finished doing its movement over here. If I click faster than what the computer is moving it up, I have to wait until it's finished. Now let's select the top row, deselecting the bottom row, and move these down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, I can see right away that both the bottom and the top rows are outside what I have set up to be 6 inches plus 6 inches, 12 inches. So I want to move them down just a little bit more. I'm going to move this down to step increment 1 and just move the top row down 3 clicks. 1, 2, 3. And I can see that it's just below the boundary of my 12 inches. So I'll select the bottom row, deselect the top row, and you'll notice I'm actually selecting empty, what appears to be empty blocks. The design was originally in these blocks, but we've moved them. But this, you still have to select where they were originally placed. So we've selected the bottom row and we're going to move it up at step size one, three clicks. One, two, three. Now let's select all three. Click the export. And we can see our, the height of our placemat is 11.62 by 17.09. If I'm going to have a 13 inch placemat, I would have about 3 fourths of an inch boundary to work with binding it around the outside of my placemat. Of course, you can make it to fit as closely together or more widely spaced apart as you want. It's your design uh, once you're putting it together for your placemat. When you send it to the quilt motion or to the, to the baby lock machine or whatever type of machine you're using, make sure that you have all three selected. If you don't, if you only have what appears to be the composite selected and you click baby lock or, or quilt motion, you only have what was originally in that center block. Make sure you have all three segments selected. Baby lock. And there it will sew first the upper row of cups and then it will sew number two the plate of hot dogs and then the bottom row of cups. You can animate the st stitching, checking for breaks. I didn't have check for breaks selected when I animated the stitching, but we can see that it's going to stop at the bottom here. A break prompt you to move over, to move over, prompt you to pull the bobbin thread. So this section finish off move forward, prompt you to uh, move to the next, pull the bobbing thread, and sew the bottom section. And that's the way you combine more than one design into one larger element using the QuiltCAD software for Quilt Motion.
I hope you enjoyed this and I hope it did help you in combining designs. If you have any questions, please join us on the Yahoo group, Jewels in Motion, where we're learning to play with our quilts, uh, uh, our jewel quilting machines, and our Quilt Motion software.